Just before our show tonight, we got some breaking news out of another Manhattan courtroom. A jury found former cryptocurrency mogul Sam Bankman fried guilty on all seven counts against him. Prosecutors allege the 31-year-old founder of the FTX exchange used the company as basically a personal piggy bank and built a, quote, pyramid of deceit. Last year, of course, FTX collapsed and Bankman fried was charged with stealing tens of billions of dollars from his customers. After a month-long trial, the jury deliberated for just four and a half hours before convicting him on charges of fraud and conspiracy. Bankman fried now faces more than 100 years in prison. He's also facing another trial on charges including bribing foreign officials, which is scheduled to begin in March. Stephanie Rules, the host of the 11th Hour on MSNBC, as well as MSNBC senior business analyst, and she joins me now. I got to say, for a relatively complicated fraud, you know, white-collar case where you're looking at, at numbers and books, four and a half hours is on every stunning. count is wow. This is stunning that it was so quick, and it speaks to the fact that the government rolled up. They took his closest confidants, his ex-girlfriend who worked for him, the top lieutenants in his company. They all cooperated with the government and they turned on him. And what was stunning was in the last week that Sam Bankman fried who, you know, is not necessarily the best communicator, doesn't present well, chose to take the stand. And what did the prosecution do? Hit him right between the eyes and showed up with receipts. They used his own words and his own lieutenant's proof and said, no, sir, this is what you did. And that's sort of what people are saying. Right. This almost has the ghosts of Trump. Right. When you think about all the people that the government is rolling up against Trump right now, and could they turn to him and say, no, sir, these are your words. Right. These are the documents. And so the prosecution showed up with the receipts and boom, in four hours, guilty on everything. That's stunning. Yeah. And I think part of it, I mean, there's two things here, right? One is the hubris of testifying for yourself, which usually, usually you don't do that. But this sort of idea of like, I can talk my way out of this, which I think... But that's how he's always seen yes, himself. Yes, and he's, he's, even he's, through this whole thing, he's been talking to reporters, he's been giving interviews, he's like, bro, don't. Okay, during this, he was taking phone calls from me months and months ago, right? I obviously right. wanted an interview. I would talk to this man on the phone thinking, I can't believe this. Right. But he has always felt like this business, this corporate world, I know better, which is the same thing he felt about politics and every other vertical. He viewed right. people over the age of 40, you and me, uh -huh. useless. <laughs> well, well, I mean, I've, I imagine there were some on the jury. I mean, part of the thing, too, about this case, I, as surprising as it is for a sort of complex case like this, again, it's not that complex, but uh, to come down so quickly, is that the, the, the core of the crime was not complex, right? See, like, Okay, you just hit everything. Because people from the outside are like, oh, crypto, I don't get it. No, it's, this isn't about crypto. No. Right? It's about stealing. Yoink. It is about saying, <laughs> yes. uh oh, I'm losing money over here. I got all these customer funds over They've here. Got deposits I'm going yeah, exactly. to move A and stick it over to B. Right? Ding, ding, ding. You have just fraud explained the, the crime. Right? Sam Bankman fraud right there. Right. right? This isn't about how crypto works and the market went up and a margin call. Uh uh uh. Right. Yes. If your banker, uh, had a problem with sports gambling. Yes. And was That's out exactly to the mob it. and then just decided, well, there's a few thousand dollars sitting in your account. Maybe he could pay, pay off the guy. It's gambling banks. We all understand, like, absolutely can't do that. That's essentially the government's case against him. I'm going to defend him for one moment. Yeah. One of the reasons he did believe his own hype is everyone else did. Dude. Okay? The biggest names in do finance. You remember that Super Bowl? The most... <laughs> It was the, it, right? the most insane right? thing I've ever seen. It was the FTX Super Bowl. And I don't just mean uh, Tom Brady and Giselle. Right. You had some of the biggest investors, the most sophisticated investors on Wall Street that could made huge fees investing in this guy. Right? Last year, it was just a, a year ago plus a few weeks, he spoke at a huge finance conference in New York. Everybody rolled up there wearing suits. That guy showed up in his Dungeons & Dragons look with the yeah. hair, and the place <laughs> worshipped the ground he walked on. So he believed his own hype, but so did everyone else, and we shouldn't forget that. I actually, I, you know, in defense of the Dungeons & Dragons look, I respect a man that shows up like that to a the thing. He, but he is now, I mean, it's really wild. I mean, talk about whatever. It's a sort of almost a cliche to talk about a meteoric rise and fall, which is a thing that we do in, in our line of work. But wow, meteoric wow. rise and fall. I mean, the guy went from some random trader that no one had heard of to one of the richest people in the world and maybe worth like $30 billion at Correct. his peak. Correct. To now looking at 100 years in federal prison 
And that whole thing happened over the course of four or five years? And thought he was going to change the world and change the world. The world operated, change politics. He was intervening remember, in Democratic primaries all over the place. He was giving Mitch McConnell money. Okay, secret. but right there. So you're going to see in some media right now people saying, don't forget Sam Bankman Free, deeply tied to the Democratic Party. And Republicans. Yes. Right? He was you, you, this right? you interviewed Michael Lewis, who yeah. just wrote a massive book on Sam Bankman Fried a few weeks ago. And and Sam Michael Lewis was with Sam as Sam was headed to Washington for dinner with Mitch McConnell, according to Michael's book, where he was going to potentially help Mitch. According to Michael, he was discussing how much money would would Sam have to pay Trump to not to run, not run yes. again. He had a scheme to I pay. I remember him. Michael wrote the book saying this is a letter to the jury, they'll yeah. decide. Well, guess what? I don't know. They decided. I don't know if they read the book. Stephanie ruled. But they decided. Always a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>